Hi there, and thanks for joining me today for this Creating Keepsakes tutorial on how to create a custom cafe awning on your digital scrapbook page. Although this technique is a digital technique, traditional scrapbookers can also create this cafe awning by following the steps above and printing out the awning on their personal computer, trimming out the awning, and adhering it to their pages. Today we'll be using Photoshop Elements 8, but most of these instructions should be able to work for older versions of Photoshop Elements as well. Today we'll be creating this cute cafe awning that was featured in a page by Jana Morton in the February issue of Creating Keepsakes. In order to do that, we're going to open a new document. To open a new document in Photoshop Elements, you simply go to File, New, Blank File. For these purposes, because we're dealing with a digital scrapbooking page, we're going to leave the measurements at 12 by 12. However, if you're creating your own page at home and using your personal printer, you can always use a letter size document. Once you have your new blank file in front of you, we're going to be working with a few of the tools in the toolbox. The first tool we're going to be working with is the rectangle tool. Go ahead and if you do not see that, click and hold on this part of the toolbox and you will see the many different options of shapes available to you. We're going to select the rectangle tool and up in the menus option, we're going to click on these geometry options. Once we click here, we can put in dimensions that we would like for the different measurements. We're going to choose a thick size of 2 inches by 4 inches for our rectangle. Now that you have your dimensions entered, you want to make sure your foreground colors are set to black and white. To change your foreground color, go ahead and press D on your keyboard. That will automatically change those colors back to the default. Now once I click down on my page, Photoshop Elements automatically draws that rectangle that measures 2 inches by 4 inches. We're going to be creating what looks to be like an exclamation point to create the awning. So the next tool we'll need from our toolbox, click and hold on the rectangle tool and choose the ellipse tool. Again, we're going to go up to the options bar and choose our geometry options. We're going to put a fixed size in of 2 inches by 2 inches for the circle. And again, once we click and hold, Photoshop Elements automatically creates the fixed size of the circle. Notice in your layers palette, the two shapes are each on their own layer. We'd like to get these two shapes now to form one shape for the awning. So we need to click on our Move tool in our toolbox, click and hold and drag our circle up until it overlaps our rectangle. You may want to get in really close for this, so go ahead and click on your Zoom tool in the toolbox or scroll with your scroll bar to zoom in and press the space bar until you get the Move tool, the hand, and drag it over if you need to see how your exclamation mark is looking. I need to nudge my circle to the left a little, so using the left arrow on my keyboard, I'm just going to nudge that over. Once you get that circle to where you like it, you can scroll back out and look at your shape, which actually looks pretty good here. I'm pretty happy with this shape. So now I'd like to merge these two layers together. In order to do that, in the Layers palette, click on your top layer and the rectangle layer. We're going to right-click and select Merge Layers. Now you'll see in our layers palette we have one solid shape for our awnings and we'll go ahead and duplicate those so that we can start creating the awning. An easy way to duplicate using Photoshop Elements is hold down the Alt and the Shift key until you see the double arrow, click and hold and drag out one shape. Repeat this to get as many awning panels as you want. I'm holding Alt, Shift and dragging out the panels over and over until you get a good number of panels that you will be using for this technique. Once we have enough panels, we're going to simply click and hold on each panel and move them. And in order to rotate them, hold your mouse button at the corner of the shape until you see the bent arrow. And you can transform and move the awning shape as much as you'd like. Click on the green arrow to commit to that change and we'll move up our next awning piece. And again, we'll click and hold at the corner and rotate it. Continue this process until you've placed all of your awning shapes and got them in the placement that you would like. And just a couple more here. I might have to create a couple more awning shapes, which will be very easy now that I know the short, quick technique. 
of alt shift and drag a new shape and just continue placing those awnings and now that we're on the other side of the awning we're going to want to click on the other corner and rotate it a little bit out and finally one last shape alt shift and drag it out till I get it exactly where I'd like it now it's hard to determine as you look in the layers palette where the separations are for these shapes but if I simply just click on the different awning I want you'll see the march you'll see the ants highlighting each individual shape for this purpose I'm just going to choose a color because we're working with our February issue let's choose the color red and I will fill the shapes every other just like the cute page that Jana Morton created I'll click on my paint bucket in my toolbox and simply click on the shape that I'm looking at. In order to select the next shape, I'll go to my layers palette, click on the next shape to fill it. And I'm alternating every other shape so that I can just color them. More advanced Photoshop Elements users can use these, these different awning layers as clipping masks and you can actually attach pattern paper to them or some cute ribbon and really dress them up if you would like. The next thing we'll do is change our foreground colors. Simply press X on our keyboard to have white be our foreground color. And I've got the paint bucket selected and I will select every other panel again and change those shapes to white. Continue clicking and holding on every other shape until you get every other awning shape changed white. Now you'll notice the colors are starting to fade away. One thing that digital scrapbookers are very happy to use often are different layer effects. Drop shadows bring a more realistic view to the different elements that digital scrapbookers create. In order to do that, click on one of the awning layers and in the effects palette, we're going to click on drop shadows and we'll choose a low drop shadow here and go ahead and click on apply and you'll notice that it's starting to give a realistic shadow to these different awning panels. If you'd like to change the different measurements for that and the different effects, go ahead and double click on the FX key in your layers palette and you'll see that you can actually alternate and adjust these. For Jana's page in the February issue of Creating Keepsakes, her measurements for opacity were at 75 percent, 12 pixels for the distance, and the size of her drop shadow was 24. Once you get those measurements in place, go ahead and click on OK. Your first drop shadow is applied. In order to copy that drop shadow and apply it to the rest of your panels, simply make sure you're clicked on the layer in your layers palette with that FX mark. Right click, select copy layer style. Now click on the very next layer below it. Scroll down to the final layer of awning shapes. Hold shift and click to select all of those layers. Right click and select paste layer style. Now you'll see that all of the awnings and their panels have a drop shadow applied to them. The last step in this effect is to group the layer of awning panels. To group the layers you're going to want to click on the first shape layer. Scroll to the top and hold shift and click on the top layer and then the small icon that looks like a chain is to link the layers. Go ahead and click on link layers. Now that I've linked these layers, if I have to move my awning at all for my digital page, every layer will move together. Thank you for joining me today for this Creating Keepsakes video tutorial on how to create a cafe awning digitally using Adobe Photoshop Elements. For more tutorials or more information on scrapbooking and digital scrapbooking, be sure to visit us at creatingkeepsakes.com.